Hi, everybody, and welcome to this slightly late uh, version of the Blizzard Watch podcast. Uh, we went a little late because we we had an inkling that something might be happening yesterday, but unfortunately, nothing did. Uh, so we're not going to have anything to talk mm-hmm. about this week, and we're all just going to go home. Uh, it's been nice for you to show up. No, I'm kidding. This is, of course, <laughs> BS on my part. Uh, first off, yes, we are doing kind of a little war within Alpha uh, discussion. Uh, if you're watching the stream, you can see that we are, in fact, in the Alpha. There's a couple characters up on the screen already. Um, before we get any further, I do want to say hi to Nick, who is coming on in for uh, to, to help discuss War with us, because he's had the Alpha longest of any of us. So he's had more time to to explore it than the rest of us have. Uh, hi, Nick. Hello. Thank you for having me on. I'm glad to be here. Of course, we've got uh, our, our magnificent Joe and Liz also here with us. Uh, hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Uh, Joe, that's, I call him magnificent. That's all I get. Yep. <sighs> yep. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. Uh, lots to talk about. So first off, um, this is the interface. If you wanted to look at it really briefly, if you're watching us stream it, and if not, well, you don't have to. Uh, but one of the things that they've put in for the War Within that I think a lot of us were interested in is this. And I keep wanting to call it the Warframe, and that's not what it's called. Uh, war, warband. War, war, war band. Yes, the Warbands. Um, you're looking at if you again, if you're looking at it, you can see that they have a campfire there in the in the center, and then your characters appear around it uh, as you you know go to log in. You've got the typical login on the side. Uh, you can actually make favorites, which is fascinating to me. I didn't know I, you could like favorite characters. Go ahead. Um, uh, maybe Nick can tell us. I was under the impression that favorites would be that those would be the characters that would show up in your Warbrand screen. Um, because go ahead, go ahead. It, because it's only uh, four characters that'll show up on the screen, even though every character on your account will indeed be part of your Warband, but only four of them will show up on that screen with the campfire. And you know, you can admire their transmog. They can be obviously besties hanging out together on the login screen. Uh, yeah, so only four at a time. All your characters will, like, once it gets beyond four, will show up beyond that or below that little line. And then you can just, and I know this because to get a look at all the hero talents, I made like eight characters um, during the first two days of the alpha earlier this week. And it's easy to just drag and drop them to make them look or put them in whatever order that you want. Um, and if I can just like go on a little bit more about it, yes, the, please. The warband thing when we so earlier this week the alpha went live uh, by the for the invite press release or press event only from Monday through Wednesday. We had a Q and A with devs on Tuesday, and the warband system was something that they're really psyched about because like. And when I look at some of the like the preview article that comes out, it's kind of under underselling in terms of like what it is. Like when they say it encompasses everything on the player's battle net, the actual Q and A with the devs, they were talking about like the battle or, or the warband system represents like not just a philosophical shift of all your player or all your characters being under one roof, so to speak, but also from like a technical side as well. So they they told us that on the data side that yes your account has like let's say your account has four characters right and all that data is technically under one ha- under the same roof right but each character is in a different room so they're together but separated and they're separated by like you know whatever their lines of code them trying to like really simplify this to make it easier right it's like there's walls there's a barrier even though they're all under the same roof. What the Warband system does is essentially brings everyone together into the same room for all times and purposes. And it's part of a shift that they want to try and go and make to have everything in WoW essentially be account, like truly account-wide as much as possible, barring a few um, exceptions. So all that data like separately becomes one, so to speak. Are you done? Sorry, man. I, yeah, okay. yeah, no. no. Uh, cool. No, I'm I'm actually looking at it right now. I just made a third character just so I could mess around with it a little bit. Uh, you can't import characters yet, unfortunately. But yeah, right now I've got you've got the three characters, and you can switch between them right there like that. Yeah, it's really cool. 
Uh, I'm going to actually log this one in to see what happens. Uh, but yeah, this is just one. Like they've actually made a lot of a lot of stuff is changing with the warband system. One of the things I noticed, uh, we we didn't put a post about it, is how it's going to streamline leveling quite a bit because once you get your character, your first character to max level, you get an experience bonus to the following characters. Um, any other characters you level, you're going to get bonus XP. Basically, so it's it's a complete replacement of stuff like the old days. We would have the uh, I want to say heirloom armor. Is that what we used to call yeah, it? Yeah, I don't think I don't think heirlooms have gone away, though they were nerfed uh, an expansion yeah. or two ago. Um, but this is I mean, basically the, an expl- uh, it's a replacement of that idea in terms of how to speed up leveling. And yeah. and I mean it's interesting because you level one character eight to eighty, you'll have a five percent experience boost for your other characters. Two characters, ten percent. Three characters, fifteen percent, and so on, up to twenty five percent. So by the time you get to the end there, that's pretty significant. Yes, it is. It's really interesting. Um, as is always the case for an alpha, I apologize for all these giant people floating in the air. Uh, they're the various people you can buy stuff from. But yeah, it's the other thing that's interesting about it for me for the war band isn't just it's this idea like li- what, what uh, Nick was just saying about how they're all in the same room now. Uh, like it, it, it feels like it's their response to other MMOs than that do character systems differently. And have basically allowed you to take one character and do a lot of different things with them. Like, uh, I think Final Fantasy, uh, I can't remember the number of the Final Fantasy MMO. I apologize. It's uh, 14? 14 is the MMO, yes. Yeah. Um, they have basically the job system where you basically have one character, but you can, like, okay, I want to be a, uh, I, I don't think they call it a Death Knight, but whatever their, their equivalent is, you can go from the Dragoon to something else. You can, you can switch your, essentially switch your class because it's the job. They're not doing that, but they are making it so much easier to basically have as many characters as you want, and all the stuff is shared between them. Reputation is shared between them, all that kind of thing. And that's really go ahead, Liz. I can hear you. I should so. note that reputation is not one hundred percent shared. Mm-hmm. There are like some big caveats there. Um, your renown from Dragonflight and all of the renown in War Within are shared, but old renowns are not shared. They want to make them shared in the future, but they that's not going to be a launch day thing. So it's just going to be Dragonflight and War Within initially, and then they're going to be adding more reputations over time. But there are some things that won't be shared, things that represent player choice, like um, Aldor and Scryer, you chose one or the other, so it's not like you could level one character with Aldor and one character with Scryer, and now all of your characters are exalted with both of them. Uh, Those won't be shared. Um, Insane in the Membrane, that horrifying achievement where you have to get exalted with all of the goblins and honored with uh, the Bloodsail, Bloodsail Buccaneers, and all of them hate each other. Uh, that will not be something you can do on just one character and have it done by all of them because it represents like a particular challenge. But the goal is certainly to really make the entire game. This is an account wide thing. This is something that you, the player have accomplished and it doesn't matter which character you're participating on. You have done this. Yeah. And I especially think for leveling, it's a really good move because let's face Mm -hmm. it after you've taken a character to max level, it's cool the first time. And it's still pretty cool the second time. I got, I think I got five to, to max level in Dragonflight. By the time I got the fifth one to max level, it was going from, wow, oh, this is really cool and interesting to, yep, 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 I heard it already. Come on, hurry up. I got to get, I got to go talk to the horse people. Come on, let's speed this up. I got to ride a puppy. Oh, you're a really cute puppy, but this takes forever. Oh, wow. And that's, I think that having that incrementally increasing buff as you level more characters to max level is a really nice way around that idea. Cause that is, I mean, we all, we've all felt it. We've all been like playing a character and, and had them basically as you, as you've done this before, like all the RP stuff in a, in a, in a choice, like, well, like when you go to, uh, I, I'm going to use battle for Azeroth as an example. When you, when you're going around cult, cult Tiris or, uh, Zandalar and you're doing the, you know, you're picking which zones to go to the coolness factor fades just cause you've done it and you've done it and you've done it. So I think that that's an interesting way around that too. Um, it, it is something that I'm really interested in seeing happen. Unfortunately, I'm very frustrated at the moment because all the realms just went down. Uh, so I'm currently looking at a loading screen, which is just great. Um, sorry oh, well, for those who are watching it. Yeah, I know. I know. I can go back to the renown real quick. 
go ahead, Nick. Yeah. So for the renown, um, all once the war within starts, um, like for your dragonflight factions, you'll also your renown will just default to whatever the highest it was for any given faction. So if you have four characters, one you got one lucky character to like Valdrakan Accord renown level ten, and everyone else just like kind of pittered around two or three. Boom! Once the war within hits, everyone's at renown ten, which I gotta say is such a welcome change because for someone like me personally who just really slogged on like rep grinding for all the different dragonflight factions, um, this will make it easier, at least in terms from the outset, starting with the war within factions to like keep everyone level, so to speak, and. I'm curious because it sounds a little bit messy in terms of like your renown track for all your previous ones. So like in Dragonfly, if you manage to max out everything on one character and then you're never did anything on alts, I'm really curious to see how those rewards are going to hit. Um, but that's also something that I like seeing the renown get this rework as well because now it's just... Punitive is not the right word, but it's the only word that comes to mind when I think about... Do you think you could say discouraging? Yeah, I'd say it's it's less discouraging when you want to make an alt and then realize, like, oh, I get to skip the campaign, but I got to start from zero everywhere. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, since we're on this subject, though, we should talk about the, uh, the warband banks, I think, because they kind of tie into this whole idea of trying to make it more alt-friendly in general. Um, I, I'm looking at the posts that, that we have on the site because, I, as I, you can see, I can't actually get in and look at it myself. <laughs> um, but you, you've basically got this Warband Bank, which starts off with 1,000 gold for a tab, and then you've got 25,000, 100,000, 500,000, and 2,500,000 for the last one. Uh, and th- this increases the amount of slots you'll have access to in the bank. But Go ahead. Th- each- you can... Each of those tabs, I mean, they start to sound really insanely expensive. I'm never, ever, ever in my lifetime going to get that last tab. But each tab is, I think, 98 slots. It's 90 something. Yeah, 98, 98. 196, 294, 392, so and 490. So you're getting a lot there. And one of the things I really love about the Warband Bank is you'll be able to, you will be able to craft out of it. So you can just have all of your alts throw any crafting material you come out, uh, anything you find, into your bank. And you go out and you're crafting something, all of your characters are pulling from that same bank. So you don't have to, oh, I'm training tailoring here, I've got to send all my cloth to this. Yeah, that's that's pretty similar to how Guild Wars 2 does their crafting and their crafting bank system right now, too. So that's good to see that they're they're, they're grabbing it. I know that you all are big fans of this particular topic, so I'm going to dangle this in front of you. You would not believe how fast the conversation turned with the dev Q&A from war bands to war band bank to, okay, everyone's got a, the same bank, right? Player housing when? It was like a breakneck, like divergent turn, and it was, I mean, hilarious for me to see because I know it's something I that think, people want. I think everyone's really enthusiastic about it, but there are... There are so many technical hurdles to adding that, and it already sounds like Warbands implementing this has been a pretty good going from, you know, they've had yep. to change their whole data structure to be, go from single characters to all of your... And then, um, also, this was one of those moments where it's like, you kind of just assume things would work out like, oh, this will work out in a great way for the war for the Warbank, Warband Bank. The Warbank, I like what, that. Yeah, they... they, they the. The devs were like, we missed an opportunity there. Like in real time, we're like, ah, that's what we should have called it. Darn. Um, but one of the questions was asked, like, all right, so how does gold transferring work? And there was like this split second pause of, huh, we should figure that out and then let you all know in this Q and A, which was like, I mean, it's a cool human moment. But eventually, we got the answer that currency all go, like, not just crafting materials, but your currency all goes into your shared pool, right? And then instead of like mailing a hundred thousand gold to yourself, you just send it that way. In other words, um, you just have it. You yeah, don't even you have to keep... send it. It'd just be in the war- in the bank. Yep, you just, I... you just have to choose a character to send it to. Um. So this is what I I haven't gotten a chance to log onto the Alpha yet, and I have wondered 
So is it like you take gold and you deposit it into your warband bank specifically? Like you have to specifically put it that's in the war what, bank? That's what it seems to be looking at the picture of it. Because again, mm-hmm. I can't log mm-hmm. in and look at it either. But you've got a, there's an amount of gold. Then there's the withdraw and the deposit. So I think you do, you do still have to choose to put the gold into or take the gold out of the war bank. And I'm calling it I, that. D- Daddy war bank. Go ahead. <laughs> you thank me later. Um, but yeah, look, if you're looking at it, it just has in terms of how the UI is set up, there appears to be a withdrawal and deposit feature. So you don't have to put all your gold. Like if you have, if you want to segregate your gold out by character, you can leave it where it is. But if you, if you want to send gold to another character, you don't have to, to mail it to them anymore. You just go to the bank, bop, you know, bop, deposit the amount you want to be in there, switch over to the next character and withdraw it. So that is interesting. It's not quite the way Diablo does it. Um, yeah. but it, it's getting closer. Uh, it is a very Diablo esque. This looks a lot like the Diablo stash mm-hmm. in terms of how it's working and what it's doing. Um, so Nick, did you get a chance to play with the war bands in the bank? Not the bank. Um, yeah, okay. I, there's so much so, happening here. So <laughs> yeah, when I, so when I got in, um, I noticed that this version of the alpha starts differently than the other version that the, press got to do there was actually like the little you know when you log into a new expansion you get whoever's talking head saying you know champion something terrible is about to happen you need to go to x place and talk to somebody um that didn't happen in this alpha like the ones that came out today um and that's what happened in the press one and i ended up jana told me to go talk to magni and i ended up at the sword, and then I ended up in Dalaran, and then I ended up on a beach somewhere. And then from there, I just picked a dire- picked a direction and flew. And I started taking screenshots and taking notes. <laughs> um, one thing about the bank, though, that for currency, too, that I like, is that it's not just the gold, it's also, like, stuff like your flight stones that you can transfer. Um, and for the more... For the, for the more rare currencies that you need for like you know like your like your dragon flame crests um those can be transferred too but depending on what you how much you transfer at any given time you'll get like a transaction um like a penal a penalty like you'll be charged for processing that transaction in that currency um but yeah the in terms of war bands for the war bank very messed around with that very little one of the things that at least for the war the war band itself too is that there's going to be more coming to it that they want to do like a bunch of people ask can you make them you know can you set up different armor or different equipment or you know your little trinkets here and there can you make them be do they don't do they all have to be around a fire can you have one like reading a book can you have one meditating blah 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 and like the short answer was like you know maybe depending because like yes to you it's just a person or it's just your character reading a book but to um a developer or coder it is you know x amount of time creating developing the posture the code script the like animation flow um so the one thing that i did like and it wasn't like readily apparent to me um until i tried it like when i first filled out my warband, I thought that I could just click on one of my characters and, oh, boom, all right, I'll double click on them and log in. That didn't happen. You have to click the enter button, right? And that's actually something that they wanted, They were looking at bringing more towards the, the front and into the live game sooner than later. Yeah, I just noticed that as well when I just logged in before the servers decided, oh, God, we let him in and, and died. Well, when you, say, uh, when you say they're looking to bring it in, do you mean they're looking to bring that functionality to live where you have to click the character, then click enter? Or are you looking that they're trying to fix it for you can go back to double click? Oh, the they're trying to bring it so that you can double click it and enter double click your character and enter that way instead of click the char- choose your character and then enter world. All right. Perfect. Just wanted to clarify for those at home. Joe is about to be very upset. Why? Okay, yeah. No, I I thought that's what you sounded like you were going to be very upset with them. Like, you know, if they didn't do that. No, so. it's more it's just a point of clarification, right? Because I mean, and the other thing to just remind everybody at home to kind of take it with a grain of salt since this is an alpha. 
things can change and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So don't, don't take what is there right now as concrete stone. Um, and if you had like, it sounds like they're, we were listening to some of the feedback already. So that's always a good sign. Yep. I agree on that one. Um, speaking of listening to feedback, I, I, I I know that there's probably still a lot more to talk about war bands, but we do have to try to move on to some other topics briefly. Uh, I wanted to talk about the arachnophobia feature that they've put in, which I think is really nope. fascinating. No, we can't talk about it. No, I mean I hate I hate spiders. Oh, okay. I was like, well, then this this I feature know. is for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's really funny though I, is that they've chosen um, the 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 way they're getting around it. To me, is really funny for a couple of reasons. One of them is that I have a phobia of crabs. And like, uh, I'm afraid of crabs. I don't like them. So, and they freak so me out. To, to make the connection here for the readers at home, the arachnophobia mode that you can turn on turns all spiders in the game, every one of them, even spiders that are like bosses, into crabs. So now it's all, it's all, you can choose crabs or spiders, one or the other. Yeah. And it, based on so far, all I've seen is video, but based on the video, um, it's not. It, it's not just that they have one crab that they just slot in for every vaguely spiderish mob. They actually use a variety of different, like the lobstrock models, <laughs> which I don't actually have a lobster thing, so I'm cool there. Um, but they, they bring in the lobstrock models for like the for the Nerubians and so forth. There's lots of different. They don't use just one kind of crab. They pull in a ton of, of shellfish on this one. There's there's all these different types that are replacing all the different types of spider mobs that exist in the game. And somewhere Greg Street is smiling. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it's really interesting that they've they've done this. I, I I know a lot of people with arachnophobia, including people I know worked on this game at one point. Um, you know, so I, I, I had to wonder, I was actually saying to myself, I wonder what Kim is thinking right now. Um because you know, like I said, being a being a World of Warcraft fan and not liking spiders can sometimes be a real problem. Um, there's a whole wing in Nexramus where I had I had a healer in my guild at the time, and this is Nexramus 40 who couldn't look at half of the bosses. Oh. Like uh, we did Maxina, and she couldn't look at it. Like she had to basically point her her character's perspective camera on the webbing and just use frames for everything. She couldn't look up because if she looked up, she'd panic. Um, and Maxine is a really bad one for an arachnophobe because it looks like a spider. It, it you know? looks like a spider, acts like a spider. It has a lot of yeah. the sounds that are associated with like mm-hmm. funny. The mention of the arachnophobia, but like the Maxine fight, you go back and watch the movie arachnophobia. There's some crossover fully work there. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's this- really funny is the fully work is completely not what real spiders sound like. But, but it's so associated with spiders yes. to us that it still triggers it. Yeah, it's messed up. I will say that Thanks, this is... No. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say, thank you for unlocking a memory that I forgot. I had seen that movie as a kid, and that terrified me. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this, I think, is actually a really good move forward. Uh, and I'm sorry, I just feel like talking. So <laughs> um, Go for it. We talk about accessibility a lot, and accessibility is very important to a lot of people. And we know that they've been trying to pay more attention to it as things have progressed, especially as of late. And this is sort of just another notch in that because there's a lot of stuff in the game that can be very triggering for people. But the spider thing is probably is a real big one because of exactly how many bosses and areas are just chock full of spiders. Like I, I was recently leveling a rogue uh, from, you know, beginning to, to current and I'm in dusk, uh, why can't why can't I remember the name of the uh, the town dusk or Dusk-wood. area Duskwood? Thank you, man. I I haven't had cof- coffee today. Can you tell? Um, but I was in Duskwood, and it's like there are just literally that entire zone is like it's like at least forty percent spiders wherever you go by volume mm-hmm. by volume. He's not kidding, <laughs> right? Like oh, I'm gonna go hunt this wolf. Why are there ten spiders where this wolf is supposed to be? So this is good for people that maybe had a really hard time struggling to get through that uh, or are maybe in the future going to look at things and, and not have them be spiders, but be a lob struck. So this, that's a good thing. It's a good, good, good win for accessibility. So on the uh, arachnophobia mode too, it's an instant change. Once you turn it on in game, I tested it by, I stood in front of a giant group of Nerubians that like just outside of range because I don't know if it was just alpha, but their range like detection was really sensitive. So I had a very, very, very 
small window before they descend on me and start beating me down. <clears throat> um, but once I turned it on, boom, everything turned into a giant lobster, which to me was a little bit more terrifying because kind of like what Matt was saying earlier was that it's not just one model. They're size appropriate models. And they go from like these little slender spider monsters to now you've got giant lobsters swarming on you and trying to murder you. Um, yeah, but it, it is kind of messed up. Like there's all these different crabs now. And it, I mean, you don't think as about long how long we've not been playing cephalopods. this game. Yeah, but we've been playing this game for like a long time. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary edition for, for Pete's sake. Mm-hmm. And so they have a lot of crabs to draw from when replacing the enormous amount of spiders that they have. So well, it's like, yikes, there's a lot of spiders and there's a lot of crabs. And the part of what makes this change, like why they're touting it so much is obviously for accessibility, but because there's the added, um, when you go to the later zones that are underground, there was the one-two punch of arachnophobia and claustrophobia. And mm. you'll see that in later designs. Like, I mean, it's pretty apparent in pictures of the zones that even though you're underground, it doesn't really look like you're underground unless you look hard and try and look for outlines of, you know, the cavern walls. Yeah, yeah, especially in specific zones. Some of the zones, it's it's practically in, indistinguishable. You can't, you really have a hard time telling. Go ahead. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Was like, that was pretty much it. It was just that being aware that, okay, like, you know, not everyone is afraid of spiders, but maybe some people are afraid of enclosed spaces. And some people hate being underground for long periods of time um in terms of the game and that one and two punch coupled together may just be like for some players not worth it to try and suck it up through yeah especially since it's it's a situation of if if you have both of them it's really going to be a nightmare yeah so absolutely uh, i on the subject of that since you brought that up um i watched the video where ian was talking about uh how they were designing the zones they didn't want them to feel like you know really claustrophobic or really tight in and uh they they use the example of the zone with the giant crystal in the sky that is effectively taking the place of the sun and with the Halifall. with Halifall, yeah when you with Halifall the way it is you can't really even see that you're in uh, in a cavern unless you basically fly up to the top and so so you can actually fly all the way up to the top of the cavern but it's way the heck up there um, did you get a chance to do anything like that? Did to look around at the area around you to see how enclosed it feels? So for the alpha, the uh, only area that's accessible right now is the Isle of Dorne. Um, there is a way to get into the next area, which is the Ringing Deeps, the first underground area, it looks like. Um, and the first, obviously, one of the first things I did was I tried to get in there. Um, I hit a loading screen. I got the briefest glimpse of what the next zone looks like. And then the game spit me out and said, you're not supposed to be here. Um, <laughs> but for this round of alpha, they Blizzard has said their plan is to be week over week. They'll add a new zone. So right now we've got the Isle of Dorn. After, I'm sure not next week, but the week after, then it'll be Ringing Deeps. And then after that, it'll be Halifall. Very cool. I want to get the chance to look at Halifall just to get to see that. But um, while we're talking about all this, since we that we just segued into flying around, uh, dynamic flight uh, in the War Within. From what I understand, pretty close to like, like something like 450, some of the mounts that you might have. I'm assuming only the flying ones. Uh, you know, it could be really unfortunate for my Pinto to suddenly be like, ah, I'm up here. Uh, but so like 457 mounts have been put uh, on the system. It's it's 464. 464. <laughs> to be okay. precise. Yeah. So that's a lot of mounts. Um how does it working? Like, did you you since you were flying around, how did you did you use it? Did you think it was working well? Like what's going on with that? It's really painful to go from like six of the little vigor nodes um from Dragonflight down to 3 and Ouch. not being able to change it. Um, but you mean ever or just during your time on the uh, alpha, you couldn't change it. So someone in put a code in the. I know someone did it in our staff chat, but also this kind of came up in the. There was a Discord chat that went out for the press event as well. Someone put in there this little string that would force open the the dragon the dynamic flying menu so that you could choose your abilities. I didn't use it because uh. I was at work at the time. Um. And by the time there were just so many messages, I could I don't remember who sent it. I couldn't find it. And I was just like, all right, I'm just going to 
thug it out and deal with the three. Um, but I think I think but, the problem here is that you can't. There's not a way to open the uh, dragon riding talent menu in game currently. I think that's the problem. Correct. Not that they're removing vigor. Correct. No. Um, you're essentially from how it looks to me is like you're just they're treating it as if you've never collected a gif- glyph in your life. So you are just starting from scratch. Um, but the one of the things that I noticed is that when you're using dynamic flying in Old World Azeroth, uh, in the little buff section, it says that you get you can reach up to speeds of 85% of what they were on the Dragon Isles. So you're not going quite as fast. You're still going quickly, but I mean, I guess some people will be able to notice. I thought it was fine. Um, it was super jarring in Old World Azeroth because the you can toggle between dynamic and static flying with on the mount menu and you can add it to your action bar and it's not an instant cast it's like five ish seconds but after that once you fly you know it's whatever your chosen mode is so i chose static flying in old world azeroth and then when i got ported back to the isle of dorn it automatically forced me back into dynamic flying and then a little pop-up said that you can change it back once you get the war within pathfinder so um that's just something for everyone to just be aware of once you decide or once you go into these zones you are stuck with dynamic flying um in Kazalgar and all of the the war within um zones that's really cool uh i don't i'm i'm sitting here you know kind of messing around <laughs> trying to get this character i i did get a chance by the way just to play with the uh the warband i made five characters so i could see what it's like to pull a character in and out and they do just they literally just drag and drop like you can take this level one warrior here you can put her up here she will replace that level 70 warrior who was right there uh, so yeah i mean the, they do work the thing is and i've heard this question a ton it's just cosmetic the characters who appear on your login screen purely mm-hmm. a cosmetic thing that's just whatever characters you want to look at whatever your favorites are Whoever has the coolest transmog is definitely how I'm going to pick who goes there. But it has no structural impact on your warband itself. Everyone, every character on your account is in your warband, no matter what. Yeah, and that's one of the things I really like about it. But I also like that you can move them. You can actually move the characters up and down on the little... You know, like we're right now, you can move characters I mean, up and down. Yeah. If you do it when, with the four characters that are in the warband, it switches their positions around the fire. So you can move, <laughs> like, your your Torn here can jump over to this one, or you can drop into there, or you can go to there, I, or you can go to there. And he just moved around the fire. Like, he's take, he'd go on from first to fourth rank. I realize this I, is just cosmetic, but I like that it's there. <laughs> I did find, I haven't played the alpha very much, but I did find... One bug while I was playing, which I was adjust, I was on the login screen looking at my warband, and I was adjusting my UE scale, and I changed it, and then I went, I left the menu and went back to the login screen with my warband, and instead of any of my characters, it was four naked male Torin standing there, and it's like, oh, okay, this is this is a thing that happened. Okay, I guess I'm everything is a Torin now. It's you know. Alpha, it's 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 how we do things here. Yeah, I just I just also opened up my character talent thing. Um, hero talents are not unlocked yet for this level seventy character, but they're there. They're right there in the talk interface. The yeah, if you talk to that Torn that's ten feet mm-hmm. in front of you, you'll be able to unlock your hero talents. Cool. Uh, Quest to Torin, uh, I think, but, is his name. Uh, <laughs> but I think in actual gameplay, you're going to earn those talents as you level up. So by the end of leveling in war within once you hit level 80 you're gonna have all of your hero talents unlocked yes that's how it is um uh, for the alpha they just give it to everybody um yeah, i mean that yeah. makes sense give them give us some testing time yeah you will everyone will see the oh, this is a hashtag feature not a bug um you will end up having more <laughs> talent points than you uh need and you'll be stuck with that godforsaken you have an unspent talent point Little oh, no. but little notification in the bottom right of your screen in perpetuity. Oh, no, no, yes, we'll, that's we'll not end okay. Up with, you will end up it's one more hero talent point, and God, the entire time I <laughs> was like, I was it, it infuriated me. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I'm looking at right now the two options this character has is Herald of the Sun or Templar. I assume that means that this character might be holy. Uh, 
I, I haven't actually looked at what my character. No, it's Rhett. It's a Rhett Paladin. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, those are the two options this character has: as Herald of the Sun and Templar. Templar seem to drop a big hammer on people. Herald of the yeah. Sun seem to burn I mean, people to death. Uh, you know, just, I, that's what I'm getting out of this. Yeah, I don't think there's. I think there are some new hero talents on the on the alpha, and there's a lot. If anyone's interested in it, hit up the forums. There's a lot of uh, of feedback threads, I believe, that have gone out over over the day, and. I, a lot of class changes, like too many to really go in and talk about or talk about all the hero talents in depth right now. There's obviously some stuff that goes from like uh, 71 to 80 on the re- just regular talents as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, not going to talk about that too much because, you know, that really requires a lot more exploration. I do think we should talk about this one really fast, though. Um, how, who here is going to roll a, a, a Drac Thier Paladin or Shaman when that becomes possible? Nah. Because, I, go ahead, Joe. I don't know. I want to hear you be derisive of Drac there. I just don't feel the need to... I, I make everything a shaman, but I, <laughs> I, I'm i going to be already kind of tied up with the earthen, so I'm mm-hmm. good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're working on getting yourself an earthen. And then the other possibly um, redacted race that we might get as a playable one. Do, do we actually know? or like, We don't know. Or? There, was a, there was another... Um, I don't want to talk too much about it because it was data mined and not anything mm-hmm. that was talked about or confirmed. But it seems like there might be some uh, player rigging for some extra races uh, that are either new or previously existing to the game world. So there might be more. Cool. We might be getting more allied races this uh, this time since we don't have the the Drac Thier to sort of take that slot up for the entire time. All right, but yeah, four players who, who didn't want to play a Drac Thier because they didn't particularly want to play an Evoker uh, at some point. Not so far. Not when the the game comes goes live. Not when the War Within comes out. <laughs> But at some point after that, they're hoping to bring other class options to Drac there. We don't know which ones they're going to be, but we also don't know when they're going to do it. So it's one of those things where they've, they've said they want to do it. They said they think it will be happening uh, kind of like the way the Evoker got their third spec in the middle of the mm-hmm. expansion. Similar to that, they might actually start getting other classes. Uh, I mean, it I sounds like they are... Wide. It sounds like they're definitely getting other classes. Just uh, Blizzard hasn't committed to a win, and they haven't told us which classes. Um, I believe Christian wrote the post about this on the site right now, and he wrote that it seemed unlikely that they would get druids. And I'm like, except now I really want to play a Drakthir druid, and they're like totally normal feral forms, like... It's just a totally normal bear, but it has like tiny whelp sized dragon wings on the back. I mean, let's yeah, be honest. I'm there's, there. there, there's only one race class combination I want. Anybody want to guess what it is? Uh, Tuscar Shaman? You got it, Liz. <laughs> what shaman? Tuscar. Oh, Tuscar. Yeah, that's right. Let me be my Wolf uh, Brimley. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry for jumping in there. I could hear through that entire discussion of race, you were kind of. I could hear the Tuscar like yep. emanating from it you. is it is like a battle drum always raging in the <laughs> background whenever we talk about like classes and races. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. Yeah, because you know Lee is old. I hope he's not dead. I'd feel bad if he died. Well, I don't know about that, but if he is, I will let him live on in Tuscar form when they let me make a Tuscar. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> What's really annoying I'm- to me is that uh Wilfred Brimley in the appearance where he became famous, um you know, Cocoon was younger than I am now. He wasn't okay. even 50 yet. So there's What's that to consider. So I'm, trust totally me, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Trust me, you don't want to know what's going to come out of me. So, yeah. Um, but we've talked about that. Uh, I, I do want to talk about a lot, of, a lot of stuff here. Like, I don't I don't know how much we can talk about the whole idea of what's happening to a certain place and what character might not I, be around I, anymore. I, I, do. I feel like that's kind of – go ahead, Liz. I do want to say one thing about that is that there's like right at the beginning, and this isn't in the alpha right now, but you can see the fallout from it pretty quickly. There is a tremendous event and a spoiler. You would expect this to kind of like an inciting event for the expansion. Uh, but one of the things that's that has kind of frustrated me about it is that you're seeing it on YouTube. You're seeing it everywhere. You're seeing it in headlines. You're seeing it in images. Mm hmm. Like, there's no way to avoid it. There's no way to avoid knowing it. I'm not going to tell you what it is, even though I think it's going to be impossible not to know. And I think that's a real shame. No one is going to be able to go into this expansion, load up that intro cinematic, 
play through those introductory quests and be surprised by what is going we, to be a serious moment. We we talk about this a lot, right? Like we talk about this to a point where at what point does the data mining take the fun away? And I feel like mm-hmm. this is one of those things where it sort of potentially ruins what is an otherwise potentially huge moment. So there's no big surprise left. I was actually talking with somebody at work about that today, not to completely derail, but uh, mm-hmm. this, the idea of the, cause he's really, one of my employees is really big into wow. Like he's a mythic raider. He loves it. He's waiting for the next season to start. He's waiting for the next expansion to, to drop. Like he's really dialed in. He's like, did you see this? Did you see that? I'm like, no, I, I'm not. So <laughs> well, why not? I'm like, I'm, I don't want to, I want to have some of that magic left. And because of my, one of my jobs here, some of that stuff already gets ruined for me and some of the magic gets kind of pulled away. And I'd like to try to preserve as much of that as I can. Like I'd like to, whether I'm playing it for myself in the beta or, or whatever, and I get to experience it myself, I want to be able to experience it myself and not just look at data mining things. Mm -hmm. But I know that that's not what, that's not good for everybody. I know some people are really into it, but like, what we're talking about here, and I'm sure other people would agree, it's one of those moments where I wish it would have never been brought up outside of, uh, you know, go go do this thing and, and, you know, have fun. And, well, maybe it won't be fun. Who knows? But go go do this thing. Yeah, it's it's just a shame that we that we've lost so much of an element of surprise. And it would I can just imagine it in my head what it would be like to go into the game and be shocked by this. Mm-hmm. But I don't think. I think there are going to be very few people who are going to have the opportunity to be surprised. They, you're going to have to be really unplugged. And for those of you that are ta- uh, listening at home, it's uh, Mechatork comes back uh, and there is a cabaret show involving all mechanomes <laughs> and gnomes. Uh, <laughs> that's the opening number to The War Within. So it starts the everything. Cho, no, Cho, you're, you didn't tell them the part about how he's married to the trade Prince Gallowick. Oh, and they it's a real Romeo. Gnomes. It's a really it's a real big Romeo and Juliet moment. Yeah, yeah. And goblins and gnomes are going to form like their uh, united coalition that all the other short races of Azeroth are going to join. So, yeah, you didn't you didn't mention that. I'm I'm a little upset because it's so important. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, this is me. This is, you. this is me trying to inject some humor into this and lighten it back mm-hmm. up a little bit. <laughs> no, in, in all sincerity. Uh, I I I was hesitant to mention it because of the things you guys said, but also because, quite mm. frankly, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like you know, mm. like we don't. If you we're, were, you didn't get to see so, it happen unless you like were on the the event from Monday to Wednesday, maybe. Mm-mm. So it's a lot of stuff. Like you know, when you when you go do one of these alpha tests, a lot of times stuff just isn't implemented. I remember the. Yeah. I think it was Battle for Azeroth when they first put the. Uh, the, the one to 10 starting experience in and there's all these moments where it's like there'll be a cool cinematic here and like there's x lines across the screen i'm like i don't know what happened just now but apparently <laughs> them them ogres is upset about something so i do want to, to caution people not to get too worked up about this yeah um, agreed and, and yeah, again don't- no, alpha go ahead, go ahead. it might it, alpha maybe it changes Maybe what we know about it isn't the complete story. Maybe how we, we get there and get past it is going to be completely different. You never know. Guys, at one point when we were doing Mr. of Pandaria all the way back in the day, they completely reworked a zone in the middle of the test. <laughs> they completely reserved yeah. the, the very opening sequence that with the, the Jade Serpent statue. That whole yeah. thing got reworked two or three times. Yeah. So things happen. Uh, that That is certainly something to keep in mind. Um, I think I oh. want to talk about Delves at least a little bit. Yeah. You, you get to do any delves, Nick? Yes. So delves are um, part of. Okay. So hold on, because this, this is burning out of my skull really, really, really quick. Just about <laughs> the what we were all previously talking about when it happened in the. So there is a part of that that even the alpha testers didn't get to do. And during the Q and A session, it was like, okay, no, you're the opening quest for everyone is going to be experienced at the same time because they want everyone to be on the same page have like this big you know rallying moment and you know true like warcraft experience like the what i think about is the um broken shore at the beginning of legion Mm -hmm. right like something kind of on the scale of that um and then you do part of an opening quest that's obviously related to it and then your 
transported very, very quickly, like into like, a not even just a handful, a bunch of quests down. Like I tried to reverse engineer as much as I could because I was like, there's just no way that a spoiler like that just casually gets dropped in a um, description of a scene. Because if it was really that big, I think that that, that should have just been taken out. Like that specific one, like you just get the window that says, there's a cut scene here. Deal with it. You don't know what's about what it's about. Um, but so much happens between the start of the expansion and uh, where the alpha testers ended up, even this current group. So that's also something I, I really wanted to echo back. Like, yes, like this is a potentially huge spoiler, but I think that with how it's shaping up, there's definitely way more that you can experience. Now, back to delves. Delves are um, delves are a new player progression activity that they want to be on par with raids and mythic dungeons. It's just essentially adding another option for people to level up. Uh, you'll learn how to do delves as part of the quests in the Isle of Dorne. It is quite literally woven into the story. You cannot miss it you have to do it to progress the story and it is a step-by-step -step breakdown of it um and what there are they're just essentially little instance mini dungeons um you get an npc companion for season one it's bran uh season two they said it would change up i'm not sure who it is they the devs didn't say who it was but there are members of the Dragon Scale Expedition from Dragonflight around on the Isle of Dorne and members of the Loam Niffin. So we've got options on who will be accompanying you in terms of these delves. Uh, but they're really, really straightforward. You go in, you have a scenario. There's something that's happening. The scenario that I got was I needed to push a cart from one end of a mine to another. And along the way, I needed to free some of the miners. I needed to kill things that were trying to ambush me. And that was it. Um, it also kind of works a little bit like Torghast, where you can open random chests or kill randomly spawning elites, and they'll give you powers. But those powers only last for a minute. They stack, but you got to make quick uses of it. And it's because these delves aren't supposed to last very long. It's supposed to last 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and What's cool about it is your companion is takes on the role of like damage dealing and healing. They have their own set of abilities that you can customize with, to meet your needs. They can also get trinkets assigned to them. Um, I made Bran be a damage dealer, and he ran around shooting and hitting things, which was cool. But if I stayed still for too long, he'd find a pillar to lean up against and go to sleep which happened a lot because <laughs> I was taking notes and taking screenshots. And every time I turned around, he was asleep. Um, but what he'll also do and what all your companions will do is they will, there are gathering nodes. Um, there were herbalism nodes in this specific delve, which was weird because it was pure rock, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, and I would walk right by it and he would just go up, pick it and then bring it to me and add it to my inventory. I don't know how far that's going to go if it's just going to be like for gathering materials, but that was it. Um, and then there's a final encounter. The one that I had was a final boss, but there's also stuff like puzzles and platforming that you might have to get through. And then you get into the treasure room and the treasure is, I should have said this at the beginning. That's my bad. These delves scale from a level one difficulty. They, and then they set up to level 11 in the dev Q and a, but I also saw like, level 13 somewhere i don't know you get 10 plus 10 ish levels of difficulty that escalate um with different challenge modifiers and then obviously the higher you go the uh better gear that you get at the very end and another thing another thing about this is that doing dells will count towards progress towards the great vault every week which i think is really cool because it gives you this you know, experience you can do solo or in a small group, you can do in a really short amount of time, 10 to 15 minutes, and you can go in and do this and you're making progress on the Great Vault without doing any necessarily group content. You don't have to run Mythic Plus, you don't have to run raids, you can do this short time commitment activity 
with a scaling difficulty level and scaling gear rewards, and also get extra rewards in the Great Vault. Uh, certainly one thing we've seen is it's the Crate Vault has been kind of it's a little locked down to raiding and group content. Also PvP, but I someone correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the PvP tier of the Great Vault is being replaced by this new Delves tier for I think that's for getting correct. rewards. Yeah, unfortunately I can't tell you right now because I'm still in Orgrimmar, but I do believe <laughs> that's correct. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think it's really cool that we're getting this other progression method. And if it works out, if it feels good, I think that's great that we have kind of this third way to advance in PVE content that just doesn't require you to commit tons of hours to raiding, doesn't require you to do these challenging Mythic Plus dungeons, which can be hard to find groups for, can be a significant time commitment, all of that. So I think I think Delves sound fantastic. I can't wait to try some of them out. Um, Go ahead, Nick. I'm, I was working on this earlier, so I should know this off the top of my head. I was looking at what uh, the rows of the Great Vault were, but now I can't. It's one of the old first War Within um, articles that <laughs> Blizzard put out. But um, one thing that I didn't mention about these Delves, and this because this came up in uh, the dev Q&A, because these are supposed are supposed to be an additional progression like activity for players to do, you know, what are the restrictions on it, right? How many can you run in a day? Um, and the answer was you can run as many as you want. They're geared kind of like the, um, they're likened to the holiday events. So like your first completion each day will have the best reward or a, a higher chance of giving you like a better reward. And then after that, you have to really grind for something else. Um, but one thing to note about the Dells right now, an aspect of them that we're missing are these uh, resplendent chests and resplendent keys. So throughout them, you can also open up these gear chests to get more rewards by putting together... It sounds like you're putting together keys kind of like for um, Sibelian and Rathion in uh, the Dragon Isles, where you just farm key parts and put it together but uh yeah that part wasn't in the game because or in the alpha because we just didn't have enough of the materials available but they want it to be an activity that people can just do and as many times as they want without it being like you know worry of lockout or anything else also um the more times you do them obviously like for the keys specifically i bring those up because you'll get less and less of those the, each day or throughout the day, the more you grind it to kind of like preserve the rarity. But um, the treasure chests at the very end, some of them will be mimics. So have fun with that. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm thinking, you know, in Plunderstorm, actually, you could be running Plunderstorm and s you, sometimes you would run into a chest that was actually trapped and it would explode in your face. Mm -hmm. So... And maybe, maybe there's a little connection here. Now some of our chests, we might be looking at a, at a treasure chest, but actually it's a mimic and it's going to eat your face. So, hmm, hmm. That, that certainly is going to change our relationship to treasure. I wouldn't be surprised if they bring that exploding chest back because there's some <laughs> areas where you can definitely just get blasted off into oblivion. And, uh, I mean, I don't like needlessly like punitive things in games, but mm -hmm. I do appreciate like a good troll every now and then. Something like that it would get a laugh out of me. Um, a good Zuljin. The So yeah, that's that's what we got out of, out of Delves right now. Um, the, I want to see more of them uh, throughout and like in their entirety, but... Okay, um, I do want to talk a little bit about the data mine stuff that Liz sent along. Um, we've got some information about the Earthen, uh, stuff like racial abilities, their paladin amount, which pretty much tells you they're going to have paladins, um, and the heritage armor. Well, the heritage armor is the easiest to talk about because you can just look at pictures. I don't, but I don't know if you guys are getting to look at them. Um, I kind of like it, but I also kind of feel like the helmet doesn't really work with it. Uh, just looking at the various screenshots, the helmet seems to be like I, I won't be surprised if there's more detail to come for that helmet. Let me put it that way because it doesn't look quite the same as the rest of the set. Uh, but it's it's a pretty standard, you know, I'm made of rock, so I don't need an actual chest plate sort of helmet. I mean, armor set. 
I like it, but you know, Joe, have you got a chance to look at this at all? Nope. Okay, then the shaman totems. I... Uh, we can't really talk about that. Uh, but yeah, they have their shaman totems are actually somewhat reminiscent of the dark iron ones, but they have their own feel. Uh, they look like a, like a combination of a hammer and an anvil. It's like if you had an anvil that was hammer shaped. Um, <laughs> this is the best way I can think of to describe them. Liz, so that I, hammer. I, oh, sorry, go I, ahead, Liz. I mean, I do want to take a step back, and for people who have not been following this, Earth and our new allied race in the War Within, and they are literally Earth. Um, the the friendly Earthen we have seen before in the game, except now you can play them. They are going to be available to both Alliance and Horde, so you can live out your dream of being a Horde dwarf if you want to. And I I think their most interesting racial ability is ingest minerals. You are always well-fed but cannot consume food. Activate ingest mem- minerals to consume a gem and change the benefit granted from you to, granted to you by well-fed. Uh Amber gems give you stamina, emerald gems give you haste, onyx gems give you mastery, ruby gems give you crit, and sapphire gems give you versatility. And I this is ridiculous and I love it. I, I do find myself wondering, does this this means no feasts or anything like that for Earth? I that's certainly what it sounds like. It's yeah, you, you ain't eating food. Though the problem with that is are these buffs enough to compensate for that? And if they are the will they know, be a huge tri- benefit to leveling. Because you suddenly yeah, have a raid, are, a raid worthy buff going on. Are are they going to be a huge benefit to like top tier raiding where you know they go through so many feasts? If you have something that you just get that's comparative to that, then I don't know. It's an interesting one. It's a very interesting one. And I believe we will all be able to unlock Earthen by hitting level 80 and playing through uh the war within. So I don't think it doesn't sound like this is gonna be a hard one, but you do have to get a character to 80 first. Yeah, they have an ability called Azerite Surge, which is interesting because it's the only it's the only example of a spell or ability that has the evoker empowered spell type thing mm-hmm. where you can empower this by holding a button down basically. Um and so it's got actually three levels. It's got, you know, level 1, you just deals you know deals a certain amount of fire damage. Level 2 is it heals allies for 100% of the spell power and uh, attack power thing. So you basically you can blast things you can blast things and heal your friends uh or you can add even more fire damage to the highest health enemy if you get it all the way up to the third empowered level so if you play an evoker you probably know more about how to use uh, empowered abilities and it's the similar system um i i am terrible with them I, i could not get them to work half the time but yeah, that's, so that's interesting right there. Ingest minerals we've already talked about. Then we have like three more. We've got hyperproductive, which increases your finesse by 0%. Which it's obviously not going to be 0% yeah, yeah. in life. Um, but that's the chance of gathering additional materials. So you'll have, the, the, you'll be a better gatherer, essentially. Um, and we don't know how this works in terms of it's, if it's just well, stuff you gather or is it stuff that drops off of mobs? I, we don't know yet. I, I imagine this is tied into the profession systems in which... Mm-hmm. Finesse is a stat, and the Dragonflight style profession systems are continuing into the world, into the war within, which will have its own profession talent trees, just like we're familiar. And, you know, currently in Dragonflight, Finesse is just for gathering professions, and it does help you gather more stuff. So, uh, Titan Wrought Frame, which means your base armor from equipped items is increased by uh, some percentage. Um, That's going to be pretty sweet for people who play tanks. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's something you'll look at. Well, again, depending on how high it is. Um, and finally there's wide eyed wonder, which when you gain experience for exploring a location, gain 0% additional exploration experience, which I mean that on, on the face of it, that might sound kind of like, Oh, now they're going to level super fast, but you got to get a character to 80 before you can even roll one. So quite frankly, I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a feature. And unless that's like a hundred percent extra experience, exploration experience isn't massive you're yeah, not no, gonna not. straight up level off that so it sounds like it's a nice little perk but it's a little perk yeah um they have a um pallet amount which is basically like robo stone pallet amount it's a it's a it's a charger it's similar to the dwarf it's... paladin one but it's it's got really cool armor and really really big horns it's oh. it's a charger made of rock with yep. dwarven style armor Kind of glowy. I don't know. Yep. It's I, they've got they've got a really cool aesthetic. 
I I like them. I don't know if I'm going to roll one, but they have an awesome aesthetic. Joe, you'd said you were going to roll one? Oh, yeah, 100%. Well, I mean, I'm going to race change into one. Okay, so you have to get a character to level 80 first, and then you can switch them. Yep, sure. Sure will. So, uh, also, we should probably talk about the human racial is going away. Um, diplomacy, if you know the one. I, I played a human... Well, I mean, I play a human right now. I'm, I'm, I'm currently a human being. But, I mean, in the game, I, I played a human for, like, the first nine years. Um... And wow, it feels weird to say that. Uh, and I actually still have him. I have my human, my human warrior, my very first character. I still got him. Uh, he, I, I level him every expansion. I leveled him just just now in the last one. I'll uh, probably level him in this one. But the diplomacy racial is one of those ones where it does nothing unless you need reputation, and then it's just the best racial ever. Mm-hmm. And there's no in between. It's either completely nothing or it's just amazing, and you love it. And. and uh- for, for everyone who's not familiar with this, diplomacy is a 10% bonus to all reputation gains, and it has always meant that if you're earning reputation, you should have rolled a human. That's yeah, and, just, and that's since we've been, we've been earning a reputation in every expansion, all nine of them, we've been earning a reputation all this time, humans are always going to be the first ones to get to max rep with it, whoever you're, you're grinding it with. Now, they're reworking a reputation as a whole. In uh, War Within, correct? Like it's, they're making changes to the whole thing because part of the, the 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 way that war bands work is yeah. it's changing up a lot of different stuff. So that's probably another reason that they're doing this. Yeah, I mean, they wanted they. I believe they mentioned that they're they're trying to get some fairness here to not have anyone who's like way ahead and way superior than others, and uh, they also want to prevent you from like double dipping. Which... Yeah, you don't want to like have your human character go and get everything to max level first, and then everybody yeah. else will just log yeah. on and go, yeah, now I have it too. So, oh, yeah. and I mean, an- another thing they're doing about the double dipping thing is like, if you go and do a quest that gives you like a huge chunk of reputation, which there are lots of quests like that, once we hit the war within and we have all of our reputation is warband wide, it's going to be, you know, like the first time you complete this quest, you get a huge chunk of bonus reputation. But the second time, if you make do it on an alt, you won't get that bonus reputation. You'll get something else, like maybe a currency or some other kind of thing. But you won't be able to double dip on the reputation just by playing a hundred alts. So you can't just rush through and and hit max rep by rolling as many alts as possible. That makes sense. Um, it's also since since the reputations are by and large shared account wide, it doesn't. It's not really necessary to let everybody do the quest and get the reputation again and again because you're already going to have when you switch to your second alt, they're already going to have the reputation yeah. that the first alt earns. So yeah, it, it seems a reasonable workaround to me. But that does mean that we're going to need a new human racial mm-hmm. um, because you know. Y- y- Unless they just, you know, everybody else has got a bunch of racials. Humans only have two, one, both of which are really great, but don't get me wrong. But still, they, they're going to need to do something on that one. Maybe they could come up with something actually interesting. That would be nice. <laughs> um, I, I know that was a bit, a bit mean of me. Yes, but a little bit, a little bit. Let's, uh, let's try and talk about this one because this is when I was really interested to see. The season one dungeon rotation. Um, or if you don't know what a dungeon rotation is, basically every season, uh, for the, for at least the past couple of expansions, the mythic dungeons have got their own seasonal rotation. Some of the dungeons are the ones from the expansion and some are ones from previous expansions and you go through and you, you basically run them as mythics and you, they go up to mythic plus. And, and you, if you played with Dragonflight, you saw this rotation change every season. There were new dungeons in there. Um, for, this season, season one of, of The War Within, you've got Arakara, the City of Echoes, which is, I believe it's an Arubian city that's that's mm-hmm. coming in the I expansion. So. Um, yep. City of Threads, which I assume is is also that. Um, the Dawnbreaker and the Stone Vault, those are also, I believe, War Within dungeons. This, I know the Dawnbreaker is the ship. It's the airship dungeon. Um, so I, I'm familiar with those. Those are all new. Those are new with uh, War Within. But then you get the, the following four. These are all going to be dungeons that, that, you, that you will be running. There's the Siege of Boralis. Um, if you never ran that one, good luck to you. Necrotic <laughs> Wake, which is like the, the, the best, worst dungeon in Shadowlands. Um, quite frankly, uh, hated it. 
didn't don't want to do that again, but there you go. And here comes one that I hated almost as much. A mist of tear of Turna Seath. Seath. I, I don't know how to pronounce these words. Scythe, which Scythe. is I, I to me that was actually the worst dungeon I, in Shadowlands. Yeah, but certainly not a good uh, one. Yeah, I, I but but then just to just to make sure that they <laughs> they get the thumb right in your eye, Grim Batal. Grim Batal Mythic. It makes sense that we're running it. It makes sense because it's tied into the lore. It's 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 a it's a Zalatath deal. She she's involved in the lore of Grim Batal, and it's related to the Earthen because we know that the the Skeldren who are supposed to be in Grim Batal show up in this expansion. So yeah, it makes sense. But oh my <laughs> bleeping pirate ghost, do I not want to do Grim Batal Mythic? Oh my lord. Am, am uh, I the weird one out? Because like you're saying this, and I'm like, yep, I would run this. Yep, I would run this. Yep, I can't look. I can't wait for this. You, you, I, I you're, think you're the weird one out. <laughs> you have your own taste, Joe, and and they're they're yours, and you're welcome to them. Um, but I mean, Grim Batal for me, I had so many bad groups with it. Oh, I'm just imagining how terrible this is going to be. <laughs> and I hope I'm wrong. I would be thrilled to be wrong on this. I, I don't want it to be terrible. I just think it will be. Yeah, to be to clarify, Miss Saturna Scythe, like I enjoyed Ardenweld, and when I say like Miss Saturna Scythe is terrible, I actually just mean because I every group I ever ran it with could never get the mechanics down right, and it always ended up in everyone getting mopped. Um, one thing I want to say about the dungeon rotation, or the just the dungeons in general, at least for these four, the four the War Within ones, um, so. Obviously, like in previous uh, World of Warcraft expansions, you know, dungeons are part of the story, but they're not part of the story. You can just like skip over them and head to the next zone, right? Um, that's changing in the War Within because they're going to, along with delves, like I said earlier, delves were part of the quest line. Like you had to do it to progress the story. Mm-hmm. Dungeons are going to do that as well. Um, and they're essentially ramping up the functionality of the follower dungeons to deal with that because they want people to one experience the story and then not hit that weird roadblock of, ah, uh, I got to group up with people like, and if I don't hit the same exact button, someone else on the internet is telling me to, they're going to kick me. All right. I don't want to deal with that. Um, so I just won't do it. Um, so, and if I'm not, Oh no, I, I think that two of the, on this four, on this list of the four war within dungeons two of them are the level up ones and two of them are like the yeah. end game ones. stone vault and city of threads are the leveling ones. city of threads is the nerubian uh zone one and stone vault is in the ringing deep and yeah. those are the two leveling dungeons that are going to be in the rotation as mythics and then the level 80 dungeons um one of them is the dawnbreaker which is the hollow it's a hollow fall one it's a uh it's again it's the ship it's yep. an airship dungeon uh as as phil put it and the other one, Arakar, the City of Echoes, uh, used to be known as Old City, I guess, uh, according to, again, according to Phil in the article. But that's another uh, Nerubian one. But So for you arachnophobes, it's the City of Horrible Crabs. <laughs> and you'll be like, yay, crabs! Um, Don't forget that it's underground and in claustrophobic runes, too. That that part. Uh, yeah, also yeah. Dark. Well, that's, you know, there's only so much you can do to make the Nerubians not horrible. Uh, you know, but... But we also, since we're talking about this, I, I'm going to segue a little bit to talking about the dungeons and raids that we know about, um, since since you just opened that door there, Nick. Um, the one that I find really interesting is the Rookery. We don't really know exactly what's going on with that, but it's going to be where the uh, Earthen get their griffins. Um, and as far as I know, they're just regular griffins. They're not like stone griffins or nothing. So there's also... This is the the one where the Scarden pop up, which Joe, I know Joe and I have talked about the Scarden a few times. They're the horrible void monster dwarves in original lore. And here they seem to be the earthen have also been getting Scardenized. Uh, we don't really know. I think that's why um, Grim Batal is going to be one of the dungeons is I think that's going to be tied into this as to why are the earthen, you know, dealing with Scarden all of a sudden, what's the deal with that? And I'm pretty sure it's a Zalatath thing. Uh, Joe, what do you think? I don't really know. I would almost assume that it would be something because of Zalatath. I mean, it would make sense. Yeah, and, and the fact that they're making it a dungeon, uh, they're making Grim Batal a dungeon, and then they have this garden and the rookery. That's the very first dungeon you can run, is the rookery. Um, and again, it's it's the Earthen are hatching their griffins there. The next one up is the Stone Vault and the Ringing Deeps. That's the Ringing Deeps is the, is the place right after 
you're on the Isle of Dorne, and it's essentially the underground place with all the smelting and mi- big machines and so forth. And that seems to have this garden being repelled um, by a machine that's also trying to keep us from getting in there. So I, I, th- I get the sense that we're going to go break this machine so we can get in, and then the, the Skarden are going to get in. Because, you know, that's if anything I've learned from years of playing World of Warcraft, it's that adventurers are the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. <laughs> um, There's the actually one? a very similar line in that uh, in the opening quest, like right almost word for word. Oh my God, this is my fault. Yeah. Uh, but next up is the priority of the sacred flame in hollow fall. That's we don't, you know, we, some, some people are pointing out that it kind of feels Scarlet crusade. And that, that would mm-hmm. make sense because the Scarlet crusade is essentially, it's based on a paladin order and the paladin orders are all descended from the Arathi. Uh, and the Arathi are a big deal in this expansion. The original, the original human empire, the Arathi somehow has a presence underground, which is a time honored thing for any story set in the underground caverns or hollow earth or what have you. They almost always have like ancient Romans in this jungle. Yes. <laughs> we've been, we've continued being Romans for the last 500 years. Similar to so it's that. Funny, it's funny you say that the placeholder image in the alpha for the priory of the sacred flame is actually Scarlet Monastery. Yeah, it, it, I definitely feel like that's <laughs> what they're going for. Um, so the one of the things that we, the, we actually got to talk about the design for this dungeon in the dev q and um, and that giant crystal which someone made sure to point out is not the tip of the sword. It is something, it, something entirely. Um, essentially the uh, whole Arathi culture under in Hollowfall revolves around that crystal and uh, like using their powers through the light. And the final boss room, like we saw a still of it. There's a giant window that frames that crystal. And yeah, that is that's actually one of the ones. Once I started seeing like stills of that on the inside, I was that's one I'm looking forward to running. Anyway, keep going, Matt. My bad. Well, in the last the last one of the starter dungeons, for lack of a better word, the ones that like there's a level up dungeon in each zone sort of feeling, uh, which you guys remember from every other World of Warcraft <laughs> expansion. So, uh, but City of Threads is the Nerubian one. Um, it's basically it looks like it's got a lot of webbing, you know. Mm. Uh, so it's going to be kind of weird, I think, when you're doing it if you're an arachnophobe and you've got arachnophobe mode on, you're going to be fighting a bunch of you know enemy crabs in, in webbing, and it's like, why do the crabs have webs? Don't, don't think about it too much, is what I'm saying to you. Um, but I'm also saying it's going to be hilarious because every time I, I see these things, I'm going to be like going giant enemy crabs, hit them in the back, flip them for mass damage because uh, I can't help it. And I, and I, I love to torment Steve Ballmer, even though we've never met the man's a billionaire. Um, but coming up next after those four, we've got four more. Um, and I do like, the, I, I like the, the, one of them's uh, callback to possibly one of the best dungeons that ever happened. Uh, Storm Stout Brewery. Essentially, this is a kind of, dwarven themed version of that it's a city in it's in the city of dornegal on the isle of dorn and it's 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 a meadery it's it's a it's they brew mead there they they, they're making mead and there's a living ipa in this dungeon (laughs) Uh, i don't know how you get an ipa in a meadery quite frankly that shouldn't be happening Uh, i know a lot of people don't like ipas uh they, they, they're, they don't like the way they taste. They think they're too hipster, what have you. I always did like IPAs, but I don't drink anymore. So for me, this is going to be like the closest I ever get to drinking again, I hope. Uh, regardless, though, I do like the idea that they're doing kind of a lighthearted dungeon. Uh, so, so one of the great things about Stormstar Brewery is getting Joe to do the thing at the end of Stormstar Brewery every time. I guess like, I do. I really do. Was, and it was perfect. Like, quite frankly, it was great. Uh, oh, Paris! It would, I just, you know, I used to love running that with you. Um, Dark Flame Cleft, that's in the Ringing Deeps, and that's, you know, we're still trying to take candles. <laughs> apparently, it's kobolds, and we're the Candle King. The Candle King from Hearthstone apparently shows up, um, and and he's here, and we're, we're trying to take his candles, um, which I think, again, lighthearted dungeons are nice. I like them. Um, the Holofast, however, gets the max level dungeon, the, the Dawnbreaker, airship dungeon and the final one is Ankara Arakara the city of echoes which is again it's a Nerubian city and we don't really know exactly what's going on there but there's some void stuff and we know that the Nerubians have made a deal with with uh, Zalatath so there's probably something doing going on there with that and the last thing we've got is the first raid is going to be called Nerubar Palace and that is in case you're 
it's pretty self-explanatory that it's a big Nerubian palace full of Nerubians. And apparently, yeah, it, it doesn't, Zalatath is the essential bad guy of this expansion. Um, as, as far as we know, Zalatath is playing the role of the jailer or what have you, in that they are the one that we're chasing around trying to catch and, and keep from doing bad stuff while they're out doing bad stuff. Um, and from what we get here, looking at Nerubra Palace, we've got, you know, your standard kind of bosses. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of use for that arachnophobia mode for people who have arachnophobia because mm-hmm. we've got several spider people here, as far as I can tell them. In fact, they might all be spider people. Um I don't. I don't think we need to go over all of them, but we can if you guys no. want to. I. I don't think we do. I am going to say that the last one is Queen Ansurek, who wait, herself waits at the end. Blah blah. She's uncovering traitors in the palace. So I'm, I'm. I'm getting the sense there's also going to be not as bad Nerubians that we can ally with, based on the idea that she's finding traitors in her her you know, palace, and now she's like over already paranoid. And then she's going to just try to kill us. So, you know, that's how that works. But she's also trying to tap into dark powers and do stuff that Xalatath might want sort of thing. So, yeah. So uh, you're uh, so far, it's go- looking good. Go ahead, Nick. No, you're correct. Um, one of the things that I tried to do while I was in the alpha the first few days was, like, try to map out all the different factions and, like, who's going to be part of it. Um, there is going to be... It does seem like there's going to be a... I won't call them a friendly faction, but a faction that doesn't want to kill you first that we will probably be meeting later that Queen Anserek will, Mm -hmm. you know, look to snuff out. But I'm turning it into a meme because I had to hear this word say said to me like 50 times in the span of two minutes. But verticality is the word of the raid, especially in the last boss room for Queen Anserek. Like... They just kept t- saying the word, it's such a tall room, and verticality this, and verticality, 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 and then images of spiders dropping from the ceilings on webs. Long story short, kind of like how we did, we had a dragon riding bit in Amir Drasil, the last raid. There's going to be some form of traversing in this raid as well, except instead of going horizontally, you're going vertically. Okay, Uh could be good, could be horrible. Um, the kind of stuff always... Never been a big fan of, of gimmicks and raids. I will be upfront on that kind of thing. But we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe it'll be as, be really cool and you'll feel like you're playing Spider-Man too. Um, or Spider-Man, you know, whichever one of those two games you wanted to play. I actually kind of like the first one better. But, but only those two games. No other games. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, there's never been another game with any kind of like up, down, like, you know, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, Bionic Commando. <laughs> right, yeah, Bionic Commando. My God, Bionic Commando. Oh, jeez, I'm realizing how old I am. Someone talk. Wait, do they? Does it have to be um, up down system using strings? Because Anthem's vertical system, like, was probably the best part about it. It was probably yes. If one might actually it, argue, the only best. The, part exactly. About it. The old. It was the. We don't talk about that part. But yeah, in terms of movement. Um, yeah, I mean, for all I know, like there could be like a series of like helpful Nerubians around the edge that grab you and throw you up. I don't know, um, I, but regardless, it, I think it's interesting that they're going to be doing that. What else we got to talk about? I mean, we've actually powered through a lot of stuff, although we haven't really gotten on too much. We did mention that XP boost. There's tons of class updates, but my God, guys, there's like so many classes. Yeah, we'd be here, we'd be here until and, tomorrow. And yeah, I don't think I don't think any of us want to be here until tomorrow. And y'all probably want to turn off the podcast and do other things at some point. Um, and we're gonna, we're certainly gonna be seeing much more as the alpha plays out. We only have one zone in the alpha so far. So okay, there's more to come. We're, but we're starting to scratch the surface of the war within and seeing some of those cool major mechanics like war bands, like delves, but there's a lot more to explore. And of course it's an alpha. There are bugs. Everything could change. The developers could change their minds about any of this tomorrow, and there's something different next week. So uh, we gotta we gotta hang in there and see see what happens, how it how it shapes up. Yeah, but I will say Thrall's looking pretty buff right here. Beerism <laughs> org looking really. I just ran right through him. Sorry, or Thrall. That's really rude, Thrall. I, I apologize. I shouldn't have run through you. You should be solid. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, I'm gonna throw this out to each of you. Do you have any final statements you want to make? And then we can do the whole thing where Joe talks and then I talk and then we leave. Um, so yeah, anybody have, let's, let's start with Liz. You got a final statement you want to make? I want to say 
the worst thing about the arachnophobia mode is that all of those crabs are not wearing tiny hats. I really think all of the crabs should be wearing hats, and I'm very disappointed that they aren't. Did you, like, so just throwing it out there, hats have become such an important thing in gaming that even League of Legends has instituted a new item that costs you 500 gold that when you're in ARAM that just puts a hat on your character. It does nothing else. You just, <laughs> you literally just get a potion that puts a hat on your character. That's it. That's all it does. Hats are important. See, I, I am I am that guy that turns helmets off and doesn't wear hats, so I, I definitely could be in men without hats. But the <laughs> the crabs should be wearing hats. I just think Sorry, I am a photo of hats. <laughs> I, am, I am the eternal bane of hats. I am I am your nightmare coming to life because I will not wear you hats. You can't control me. That's why I didn't get the 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 uh Nizoth eye helmet, because I'm not putting that thing on my head. Nope. My head will be free. Anyway though. Crabs, hats, if you guys want that, I'm sure that could be something that could be arranged. Uh, Nick, since you are our guest, do you have anything? Um, no, I... Oh, yes, sorry. It doesn't have to be about hats. No, 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 it's just a real quick thing about professions. As part of the profession, like they're reworking how crafting orders are being done to be less just miserable and god-awful to deal with and do. There's going to be a... NPC that does crafting orders, so there will always be baseline availability that's not subject to some dude trying to make 25,000 gold on the market with every transaction. Um, very, very small change, but probably really huge for people that want to advance their professions. Yeah, but, that was one of the things about professions is trying to get crafting orders to help level stuff up. That was annoying. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, no, as far as that, like I had a lot of fun in, in the alpha. It was really hard to keep my mouth shut for two weeks, but now I can talk about it. So looking forward to playing more. Okay, uh, Joe. Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash Blizzard Watch. Your continued support means this podcast site and community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, better chance of having your question answered on our podcast for the queue and an ads-free site experience. Uh, thank you very much. Although I was asking you if you had anything to say. Oh, I thought this was the puppy dog thing. I yeah. got nothing to say. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I don't want to waste it at this point. Um, as for me, uh, I also kind of, I'm more of in a, let's find out. Let's go. I'm, I've basically just been running around Orgrimmar with the character trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So yeah, I don't have much now, but I will say that we didn't do any questions this week, but you know, still guys, if you do have questions, like I, there's going to be plenty of time to talk about it next week. Um, you can send those questions to us via our discord. We have the, the patron Q and podcast questions channel for our patrons. Uh, we do look there first because you guys help us have a podcast, which is helpful. Um, or you can do, if you can't be our Patreon supporter for whatever reason, we, we, you know, we don't, we don't judge. Uh, you can absolutely just use the uh, Q and podcast questions channel. It's a, it's, it's a open to everybody, or you can email us at podcast at blizzardwatch.com with subject line podcast or blizzard watch. So we know it's for this show as opposed to, the other two that we do currently and who knows by the time that you we're talking it could be another six who knows uh we, we're podcasting maniacs uh but regardless thank you guys so much for being here with us this has been the blizzard watch podcast thank you to nick for showing up and actually having some idea of what he was talking about so the rest of us could like, <laughs> ask him questions all day uh bye everybody bye bye everyone